Yeah, well, I think know. it's kind of cool that there's no, like, rhyme or reason to it. It's just talk about whatever. Well, I, I've tried to have rhyme or reasons, right? So my when I first started this, it was it, it came out as, I just want guys to come over and shoot the shit mm-hmm. and talk about, you know, have some cold beverages, shoot the shit, talk about whatever we want to talk about. Stays uh, cold for you. I got more of them somewhere. Like that. And um, then it turned into, well, hey, you you got a passion of doing this, and mm-hmm. oh, your career involves in that. I don't know jack shit about that. Come over and talk about it so I can learn. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Represent Jordan here. Baker Glass. He'll appreciate that. Yeah, I like that. So then, so then I started reaching out to people that own their own businesses sure. or that own their own farms and. And that's kind of where this thing has gone. I mean, it's not necessarily what I envisioned it to be, sure. but sometimes you got to you got to go with where where it goes. So, and I, and I've really enjoyed a lot of the guests that have been here. I mean, I've enjoyed every podcast that I've done. I really have because I've learned something new right. every time. Every time I have sat here across from somebody, or two people, or whoever, and I have learned it's something. Be a riot when you get a couple people on here, though. <laughs> It's only happened once. <laughs> yeah, it was with uh, Dan and Heather Clark. They came in. They came over and uh, talked about his, his diesel performance business oh, sure. and, oh, and, and yeah, all that. Yeah, and uh, it, it got a little crazy at times, you know. But um, but yeah, I, well, you know, the the thing about the third mic too is, is in case one of these crashes. Oh sure, back up. Uh, hey, pause. Yeah. <laughs> switch, switch them out. out so yeah. it was one of those where it's like I kind of need it. But I kind of don't. Yeah. But it's like it's like me and impact drivers. There's like half a dozen of them everywhere because one dies. One dies off a roof or something. You got it. For the day. You got to have it. Um, shoot, forgot what I was gonna say. It don't matter. <laughs> well, anyway, welcome back to yeah. the new and improved. Yeah, this is uh, hanging out different. with K Dubs. <laughs> yeah, this is quite different. I like this. I like the way you're going. So I think it'll be a uh, work in progress, but. Uh, Pull that mic a little closer. I see. I see the uh, potential. So yeah, I definitely like where you're going. Yeah. It, well, I mean, I, I do it because I enjoy doing it. Yeah. Oh, I can tell that. That that's just what it is. You know, um, it's just so much fun to do. So How many do you think you got to do before you don't have to go to work? <laughs> the way it's going, four hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. <laughs> you got to start making money to, in order to not go to work, you know, and, and, and we're far from that. But I, I don't care about that. It, it, it's, it's minor. Yeah. It's minor. But welcome back. It's good to have you back here. It's been, I think, 10 or 11 months yeah, was since a, you've been back. Yeah, because a lot of things have uh, definitely changed on my end since. So I, Was it December or January that you were here? I want to say it was this year. So it must have been um, January because you were one of my first ones. Yeah, and I, I was, started in November. So next, so yeah. next month, it's going to be a year of me doing yes. this. Congrats! Wow. You're stuck with it for a year. We're not, we're not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might, might quit three weeks early. I could, I don't plan on quitting, but, uh, but yeah, it's been a, been a while yeah. since you've been back yeah. here, and it's been a while since we've talked. So I'm, I'm, I'm all ears, man, of 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 all the different stuff that's changed since we last had that conversation so it's all the same and it's all different you know i kind of um i think the last time we had talked a little bit about like stuff i had coming up which is now either like done or in process so we finished up that custom home which there's a lot of days where i sit there and i'm like if i never built another one of those I'm <laughs> totally okay because they're kind of a pain in the ass but uh i can believe that being then, a custom uh, home though. yeah so then like this summer i kind of made the big ag debut so trying to yeah because you move into some of that work you so. were going to put up a big pole building for somebody yeah. right yeah which we're actually like way behind schedule go figure um no we're finally we're finally getting those like actually done going done. up oh so, going up going yeah up. we're like that far behind wow so but uh it was pretty cool we had owen come out we actually snuck the crusher out of the pit uh and we crushed a bunch of concrete on site so that was kind of cool yeah because he's got a big um, concrete crusher yeah well they got there. all kinds of cool stuff that none of the rest of us get to have but uh they uh it was pretty funny because Randy had made a mention of it at dinner one night. Well, if you got to get rid of all that concrete, we should just bring the crusher out there. And I was like, 
you're on to something. Hey, I don't hate that idea. I was like, I really don't hate that idea because I was like, there's a lot of concrete to crush. Um, so then uh, things progressed. You know, I kind of like talked with uh, Owen a little bit about it. He gave me kind of like, well, like maybe on the low end this much, maybe on the high end this much. I don't really know because like we've never tried to do this before. And I was like, well, nothing like, you know, use it. Nothing like the present. Let's figure it out. <laughs> Um, so I talked it over with, with my customers and they were like, well, what are our options? We got, you know, like a one acre cow yard to get rid of a couple silos that we took down the foundations from the barn. Like it was a lot, you of had a lot of concrete. And then. so that's where I was like, what do we do with it? You know, dig a hole somewhere and put it in the hole. Well, you know how that goes. And 10 years, someone's going to be like, Hey, let's build something over there. And I'm going to be like, that's where we put all that concrete 10 years An ago. An acre of concrete. And it's, it's going to be a disaster. So uh, plus, like, you know how that goes. When you try and bury concrete, it's just nothing but pockets of air and stuff. It's always going to be settling, settling and down. moving. It's going to mm-hmm. be a disaster. So I was like, I would rather crush it or at least at a bare minimum haul it off so that we don't have to deal with it, you know. Yep, get it out of here. Um, and then I started running the numbers, and I was like, you know, if you haul out a littles for, like, base stone – you know, that's probably like almost a two hour round trip on the trucking and then plus all the material, which like I mean, Mark's gotta make money too, so everybody's like gotta the, make money when it's the job material like that. price went up this year from last. So like I started running the numbers and I'm like, Man, I think we'd I think we'd about shake out the same either way. Like if we haul it in, that's one number. And I said if we if we crush it and reuse it, that's kind of the sort of the same number. So I was like I'm leaning that way. So uh, we got a little closer, and we hit a little bit of resistance. Uh, Mrs. Powell didn't want that to leave the pit. (laughs) Um, But uh, Owen had the bright idea. He was like, well, we'll we'll just have McKenna ask her if she wants to go out to lunch with Cash. And then she'll go out to lunch, and then we'll just sneak it out. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not taking the fall for this, dude. Whatever you do is what you do. But I'm I'm out. I'm innocent. You know, I got to pay the bill. I'm just the guy as as over here. Go. What you guys do in your operation, so, you just leave me out of it. ended up all working out, and she kind of came around to the idea. So uh, we ended up moving it over there. We crushed all of it. I, I had a big hoe there for a week. I uh, was able to get all of her demo done. Uh, everything that needed to get like hauled out garbage wise was gone. Okay, time out a minute. So, were you able when you crushed that concrete? Were you pulling the rebar out when you were doing all that, or was what it is e- rebar? Okay, so you you it was, are a farmer, so you probably know a thing or two about rebar. I know a little bit about um, it. That's why I'm asking. A lot of it was poured. Um, so I think like the farm they started like his. So that it would be his great grandfather started kind of building it in like the early 50s i think uh there was a lot of yep bring the truck back pour it right here so so there was 100 gallons of water in that load and make it real wet and then just drop a chute and just let it go so a lot of it was just like enough concrete if you want to call it that to like scrape shit it wasn't pretty um, so there wasn't a lot of metal or anything. There like wasn't that. a lot of bar in any of it. And a Good. lot of it, uh, cause I didn't know if that machine would crush rebar with so the concrete that or one's a, that one's a jaw crusher. So it's just like two pieces of metal that just constantly like smash together. Um, so like we had, uh, some like fence poles, excuse me. We had fence poles, which, you know, farmers love like fence pole rebar. That's, that's great. You know, throw it in there uh, and hog call it panel, a day. <laughs> uh, hog panel rebar, another great way of, you know, cheap, reinforcing concrete. Cheap concrete um, reinforcement. But really there wasn't that much of it. It was like anywhere that there was like curbs, they put like a little bit of bar in, but otherwise like all the flat work. The silos were all probably just the metal rings around um, the silos. Yeah, so the one was like a real old stave silo, so that one just had the rings. Uh, the other one, the staves had ribs, and mm-hmm. then in the ribs there was like a, you know, like a, a rectangle of rebar. But that's small enough. Those staves are small enough that all that stuff just went right in, went right in, came right out the other side. Nice. So uh, I sorted a lot of that out when I started spreading it and kind of building all my pads and stuff. Well, that was, that's the next thing I was going to get to. So after you put these big chunks of concrete in, these jaws come together, break it all Mm -hmm. up and mash it down. 
you reuse that concrete. Yeah. So essentially, like the jaw opens and closes between like four and six inches. So anything that can fall down in between four or six inches is what your final product is. So you get, you know, as big as six inches pieces. The fours are pretty common, but then you also get all the fines, like Correct. whatever breaks up in that. So, um, but then we reuse that instead of like reuse or like buying uh, like three inch limestone or something like you that. You use that, down. you put that down as yep. the base then at that yep. point. So that was the base on all of our pads. So we built, uh, it was like 60 by 90 off of the one goat shed that's already there. Uh, and that was. 60 feet of it roughly was uh, for him to be able to turn the TMR mixer around in the mornings. Mm -hmm. And then the other uh, 30 by 60 was just like a shit pad to put manure on. So we built. Oh, it probably worked perfect for that. Oh, thing. yeah. Now the shit pad is encroaching in his turnaround area. <laughs> <Yeah>. So uh, when, <laughs> like, when like, we first built it, you know, he was able to do this really nice swing and just. Big circle, drive right back in, feed the other side, good to go. <laughs> and uh, now in the mornings, you see him kind of do a little shimmy shake deal back and forth a couple times to get it wiggled around. Yeah, back but, up a little bit. Uh, they had some late corn that went in, and that just got chopped like Tuesday. Like before Ooh, all this rain came, it was finally ready. So um, they just chopped that, so real late. But now like they'll be able to start hauling and they'll be able to clean that up and then he'll have a nice turnaround again but it took a little bit to get there so we used uh when we did that uh, i did like an initial cut and fill um with just like our soil that was there it was kind of like clay sandy stuff so i kind of got us rough there uh with what was there and then we put like a foot of that three inch down topped that with uh, a finer crushed concrete i actually got that from reesman's that's the old wayland pit up on uh, oh okay 14 there. yeah yeah so they have a really nice inch and a quarter crushed concrete uh their crusher has a magnet on it so it flings any oh, that's rebar slick, and whatever metallic things are in it it cleans out there's still some little pieces but like it's nothing that I'm that concerned about. Right. The concrete guys run a track machine. I run a track machine. I'm not worried about. You don't care about something sticking up like this. It's all good. You know, to go <laughs> under some under some concrete, it's fine. Uh, so then we just topped everything up to get our final grade uh, and kind of build like our swales and stuff like that to carry water out with that inch and a quarter stuff. So we hauled in a little bit at the end. But still. But, I mean, it was I'm sure probably the like a dozen loads in total between like the nursery pad that we built and that big pad and then the big barn. So a dozen loads of material hauled in is significantly better than like I could have had like 60 loads well, of stuff. Hauled what in. I was going to say was, is the time that you s probably mm -hmm. saved crushing all of that yeah. and laying it back down compared to having one, two, three semis going back yep. and forth all the time. It probably saved you a dramatic, a huge amount oh, yeah. of time to do it that. Took us, uh, it took us a week to crush it all. So I had a week of demo before Owen came, um, took the old freestall down, knocked the silos down, got all the concrete into just one long wind row ready to go. And then kind of like initially sized it. Um, so, the crusher will take like if you could feed it like a one foot by one foot by one foot piece, <laughs> it would just it eat would it. just eat, you know. Um, but you don't have that. You got triangular shaped yeah, pieces it, that it are. It gets a little goofy. Uh -huh. So like I shot for like the thickness of the concrete wherever we were. So anywhere from like two inches to twelve <laughs> inches, depending. Um, we shot for that, and then like roughly like two foot by two foot, because if it's two foot wide, it'll fall into the jaw. So. Uh, that's what we kind of initially tried to size for. Um, got it all windrowed and then got the crusher a spot to sit because that has to sit nice and level and all that. So we got all that done and then it took us a week to crush it. It was actually probably a little, it was like, I think right at 40 hours of actual like crushing time, loader running, feeding the crusher. Uh, and then none of us really know what the tonnage was. <laughs> Well, you don't have you a scale. Yeah, like I can't scale anything, um, but it was a lot. I mean, the pile was significant. So I can believe we that. had enough material to do that sixty by ninety pad, the seventy by a hundred pad, and uh, a twenty six by sixty four pad. Holy! And there's still 
a yeah. little bit left over. So uh, it yielded out pretty good. I yeah. Well, and like you said, it was really nice because all of our material is on site. So right like there. when we go to build the pads, like all of our material is there ready to go. Now it sucks that you got to cart it all over to where you're working. But still. But you're never waiting on a truck. Like it was pretty quick for Adam and I to get it all like shaken out, rolled in and ready for concrete. Well, so. and then all of a sudden you're like, oh man, you know, this spot's a little soft. I need a little more here. Yep. And damn it, I don't want to run a truck all the way back for yep. just a little bit more. So Whoosh. funny that you mentioned soft spots because there's plenty of those out there. But somehow in all this mix of doing this job, um, I somehow acquired 8,000 yards of fill for <laughs> my, our job in Genoa City. Not really sure how that happened. Um, I was looking for some fill because I kind of had an idea uh, they, the last barn that they built in 16, uh, 60 wide, 200 long. Ooh. And they're over there on Hillside Road. It's a good size, good size barn. Uh, you know anything about Hillside Road over there? Well, well they call it Hillside Road for a I reason. I was going to say, they so, call it Hillside uh, Road for They started <laughs> trucking stuff in, um, and after the first day, they were like, man, we did not make it very far. So they decided to have, this was uh, Mark and Dewey did all the, earthwork back then volts okay uh for them so they decided hey like let's just bring the scraper over let's take a borrow pit and let's build the pad from a borrow pit so i was over there and i was like you know seth i was like you guys just every year you make more and more hay and i was like it just your rows keep growing into the field i was like call me crazy but i was like give me a couple of years i'm gonna fill this borrow pit for you because when you're when you're looking for fill you're gonna it's pay for it exactly but when you're not looking for fill it's available you everywhere you can get it for free mm -hmm. and so i put a couple feelers out and the next thing i know i got a guy that calls me and says hey i'm doing a big road work project in genoa city and uh, someone said you had a dump site on b and i was like well i'm actually just off b but i'm not too far it's like we're a couple miles from super and he's like well I was planning on dumping it super and then having the guys, you know, dump a load of waste and then grab a load of gravel to bring yeah. back to the site. Makes sense. I was like, that's perfect. So then he was like, you're not that far out of the way. I could send the trucks to you and they could still hit super on the way back. And I was like, well, I think like based on my math, which sometimes good, sometimes it's not hey, good. Sometimes our math um, sucks. I was like, I think, I think we could make it work. So they came out and they took a look and they're like, I'm pretty sure we can make this work. So, uh, yeah, then trucks just from started the day coming. after Labor Day, so Tuesday after Labor Day, they started coming in. We get like 5, 10, 15 trucks a day. Wow. And that's just every single day, like 5 or 10 trucks, a little bit at a time. Well, the good thing is, is you have the fill, and if somebody needs it, you got it. Mm -hmm. And if the the property that it's on, if they need it, <laughs> right. go help yourself. So they're thrilled because uh, I think I had figured that we needed like probably around 10,000 yards to fill the borrow pit back and make it like just pristine, flat, watersheds perfect. Okay, so for a dumb guy like me, what do you mean by that? I mean, so after you build the building... Then so this was actually from the previous building that Mark and Dewey did. Okay. They just they needed they needed a flat spot. Yep. So they went next to the flat spot and they just started running the scraper. Take a load out, put it over there, take a load out, put it over there, get that spot level. Well now they have like essentially like what looks like a pond. A retention pond or something in there. So it drains out. You know, the bottom of that is e even with like the field. So it never holds any water. But essentially it looks like a giant retention pond and i was like you can't store hay bales or silage bags or anything it, like that because it still collects a little water and and it's on a big hill so i'm like you can't store anything i was like i'll bring it i'll just put out a couple of my buddies i'll put out some feelers we'll get some fill coming and i was like we'll out. just make it perfectly flat and i was like it might take a couple years but it is what it is well then this guy calls me and i'm like <laughs> we need ten thousand yards we're getting eight thousand of it this fall so I'm like, we're going to be like 90% of the way there right away. Like, And then I had a couple feelers out. So a couple of my other buddies, uh, the one guy dug a basement over on, on Hillside, but at the lake end. Yeah. And uh, he was thrilled because he's like, you're on Hillside Road. I got to drive two friggin' miles like, and I'm, I'm there. I have like a five minute round trip. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's going to be sweet. Uh, so he brought in like 25 loads from the basement that he dug. Perfect. So like, I mean, we're just 
we'll have it probably pretty much dialed at the end of the year. So then they're excited because now they're going to gain all their hay storage that's out in the field right now. Every year it gets worse and worse. We'll all be in a spot that was essentially useless before. That's great. So, uh, but yeah, so a little bit of a trick on that one. So we started working that. So I like every day is like end of the day, I get to go play dozer man for a little bit and push out some piles. That's all right. But it's, it's, it's all good fun. So I'm not complaining. Uh, it's not like you get to run a dozer all, all the time. No. So when you no, get an opportunity. I definitely, I definitely enjoy it. And then they, uh, so they actually, I negotiated that into the fill deal. And uh, so it's actually <laughs> one of their spare dozers oh, yes. is what they brought out. And uh, every like two weeks, maybe uh, the guy running the job will stop by. And uh, I'm definitely not an ace on a dozer, but I'm good enough. And uh, he'll come out and he'll fine tune everything. But it always just happens to work that like, oh man, dozers like got a quarter tank. <laughs> oh shit he shows up and grabs the transfer tank fills the thing up so i'm always like haven't put any fuel in it since we've had it there it's a free dozer there's no rent on it i don't have to maintain the thing it's yes. an old it's an old dinosaur but it still pushes out piles hey whatever, so whatever i'm works. not complaining but then uh he was out last week pushing some stuff uh getting ready for this rain that we were expecting this week and uh, he blew a ram out on it. Ooh, so he was like, oh, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it going and we'll get it rebuilt. And he's like, but I think in the meantime, I'm going to bring over our 650. Well, they bought a 650 like two years ago. Oh, a deer 650? Yeah, that's all GPSed out and everything. Uh -huh. Well, he brought that out. And I was like, oh, man, if I never got on that old case again, I'd be <laughs> <laughs> like, you probably You probably called the wife who poo and said, um, I'm yeah, going to be late home tonight. Yeah, we're going to be things about aren't, like, uh, things aren't running good. Grand in debt here in like another week when I buy one of these That's things. Like, no, because, no, yeah. it's just, you know, things aren't going good here on the job. And, and, and I'm just going to be late coming home. So don't it, don't worry about supper tonight. And, it's and a you're, totally different ball <laughs> And meanwhile, you're sitting there like, ooh, look yeah. at this. Ooh, look, <laughs> look at, at this. Big yellow screen. <laughs> in front of me yeah it's uh it was definitely i can i can see the appeal so uh but you know i didn't get to run any of the gps stuff you know because we, we weren't going to make like a job site plan yeah, before yeah, yeah, do yeah. all that but just going from like having like a 40 year swing in a dozer i was like man they got they got the creature comforts dialed in oh these things. I was like, yeah this is, well you know and pretty comfortable and and that's one thing that i'll 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 give john deere and, and you know, th their product is probably more expensive than a lot of other products out there. I mean, they're all relative, right? But their comfort features, oof. if you're going to spend all day in one of those things, yep, I want to be comfortable. I mean, I know if I sit, if, you know, when it comes to plowing in the wintertime, because I plow in the wintertime, I want to sit in something comfortable. I want to be there and be like, I'm going to be in this thing probably for the next six, yep. seven hours, eight hours, 10 hours, whatever that is. I want to be comfortable. There's a lot of days where, like, when plowing comes up, I'm like, man, would have been worth the extra money for the Denali on this right now. <laughs> nice heated leather seat, oh. heated steering wheel. I could plow in that for all night. It wouldn't be a big deal. But, like, I, I, gotta, I, I totally get the creature comfort. I got an LT, so my my, my Chevy's nothing yep, fancy. You and me, big same. But, but it does have the heated steering wheel. Oh, that's nice. And it's just like, man... When you're outside after a cold day and you get in and you click that button, that thing is warm in 35 yep. seconds. You put your hand, then you're like, oh, <laughs> this so is just right. Talk about getting spoiled. <laughs> so Owen and I have been trying to do a little bit more stuff together. I've gone and helped him out quite a bit over this last year. Good. That's the way it and, should be. Uh, because so Owen is technically that. not technically your brother. -in -law. Yeah, I mean, essentially one day. Um, but he's got that 333 now. He does. And that is that is comfortable. With I was heated seat into that. He asked me like last year. He needed uh, him and Randy were hauling in some like pea stone or something. I had to fill a porch for a house that they did the foundation on. And uh, he's like, "Oh, I got it all warmed up. The heated seats on, good to go." And I'm like sitting in there, and after a minute, I'm like, "Whoo, we she's I'm, toasty." Like, I'm like calling him. I'm like, "Hey, how do you turn this thing off? My ass is on fire right now." You know, he's like, "Oh, there's a little button on the seat." So I was like, "Oh, okay." And I ended up killing it. But I was like, "I've I've been in that a handful of times. I'm like, that's really comfy. They got that new two, well, new to them, two hundred, which is a really nice machine too. I got to play in that a little bit last week, and I I've got my fifty now. I got a fifty G this year. Oh, a um, mini, huh? Yep, I picked up a mini. Nice. Um, I kept renting them and renting them and renting them and then trying to do mini work with a skid loader. And I just was like, you know, 
how much random shit we have to do this year. I was like, I think I'm just going to go ahead and buy one. And did you get the, uh, did you get the thumb and everything with it too? Yeah. yeah. And I'm really glad that I bought the mini. Cause like it runs a couple days a week, every single week now. And I'm like, I would have had thousands of dollars out on rent. Well, it could or, have been, you or, know, to owning a machine. Or the other way, look at that. Is like you said, you were using your skid steer mm-hmm. and it was probably taking you more time because you were using the skid steer. Yep. And all of a sudden you're like, no, I, I don't, I don't need a mini. I, I can do this with a skid steer. Right. And you start doing it. And, and all of a sudden you're like, man, I got friggin' 15 hours in well, this thing. What nice a mini would have taken too? me four. You know how nice it's been too that like, cause Adam works with me every day. It's been really nice that like on some stuff, like, as fast as I can be, like, digging a hole and putting pipe in, he can be covering the hole back up. <laughs> so now there's two pieces and there's two of us, and that starts to really, like, the things that we get done and how much faster they get done, I'm like, man, this thing will pay for itself. Well, and you got to remember, I mean, you're pretty young yet, too. You yeah. know, so, I, I mean, give it time. I mean, who knows? Maybe in 15 years from now, you have a fleet of guys. You have a fleet of equipment. And, I hope and for a fleet of deers at that point. <laughs> I, it was funny because, like, I started talking back when I was in sales at, at Deer. I started talking with Owen about a 333. And, uh, you know, we kind of went back and forth, and we talked about it. And, and, and he, I just remember him telling me, he's like, man, that's expensive. And I said, it is. But I'm going to promise you this. It will be the nicest machine that you have, and it will be the one that you want to run the most. Because yep. it is a small bulldozer. Yep. <laughs> it is. It really is. And I said, and it is comfortable as hell. Yep. And it, and they are reliable. I, I mean, are, are, there, are, there, are, there, are there a handful out there that, that aren't? Sure. But the majority of them are reliable. Yeah, and it know, doesn't matter I've, how hard you work them. I've been in a handful of different stuff over the years. And, like, you know, I spent a lot of time in a 299 before I – went out on my own and like I've always just felt like the glass is too close you know they're kind of narrow in the cab and like the deer a 299 is a cat a oh, cat oh yeah, yeah, yeah sorry I've always felt like the the glass is just too close you know and like in the deer it's just comfortable you got a little bit of wiggle room and that it's goes a long way you know and when I bought my machine I didn't have deer money yet uh so I bought a talk yeah you got a talk of hoochie right? and uh it's been a great machine. I have no complaints. I know. I know quite. It's, I know quite a few guys that have talks, and, and they it is really a they, it is they a like the tank. shit out of them. Uh, they really do. It'll be hard for me to get rid of that one day, but it's been a little tank, and it's been awesome. I got a Aren't you working on getting rid of that? Yeah, I mean it's for sale, but <laughs> I had like I had one of those moments this year where like I just like went on Facebook Marketplace and I just listed everything. I was like, it's all for sale. I'm done. I'm like sell it all, start over, whatever. But you uh, had a rough day or a rough week. Yeah, I don't even really know what stirred that up. But um, you know, honestly, a lot of it was when I bought my 50G. I was like, and this thing's pretty nice. I like this. And then spent you know a couple of days in that 333, and I was like, oh man, huh, I kind of like this too, you know. And then I'm like, oh, if the talk just happened to sell, and <laughs> I just accidentally <laughs> bought, you know, even a 325, like that would be like that, that's pretty a mid, good. That's a mid my, frame. Like, yeah, and that a, would be good because I really like my mid frame for a lot of stuff because there's I still do enough little stuff. I must say, there's the, the nice about a 325 is is they're 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 a little bit more narrow, a mm-hmm. little bit shorter in length, but they still got balls. Yeah. plenty of balls. Well, the big thing that I want to move to is the tox on the mid frames, your radial lift only. Oh, I, I didn't know that. I drill a lot of post holes every year, and the radio machine you gotta continue move back and forth because the, the arc of the boom, you know. Yeah, the arc of the boom to, doesn't it, come straight up and down. Yes, it, it, it moves in and out too. Twenty-five, you have a vertical lift. I can put the auger where I need it. I can just punch it straight in, pull it straight out, and on to the next. And I was like, man, there's a lot of time that. That would be really nice because, like, that that big building <clears throat> was uh, 70 by 100, so however many post holes that is. But then there's an inter- intermediate wall that creates an alley for the goats to get to the parlor. Well, that also needed post holes. So when, you, when you're doing a building like that, what is it, about every eight feet you're drilling one? Yep. Is that what it is? Yep, under every post. And I, I do eight-foot centers. I'm comfortable with eight-foot centers. So, um I do all eight. Some guys do nine. Some guys do six. Some guys do four. But I've always felt like eight was plenty. So you're eight foot on center. And then the end walls, you can 
cheat those a little bit. So that's just like based on the width of the building and like yeah. the doors and shit like right. that. But well, when you get um, to the corners too, I'm sure it's like, well, what do we do here? Yeah. But, so <laughs> plenty of post holes though. Uh, you figure that I I drill every year with the building, so that's where like the vertical machine would just be like. It would just take a little bit of the, the thinking out of that, I guess, you know, <laughs> just make that process a little smoother and the talk's a great machine, but it's a rattle trap, you know, it's that the door goes up, which mm-hmm. is like my favorite thing in the world because like we use it when we're putting the buildings up too. And so I can have the door open and the windows open with like the truss boom on and then like. I can hear, I can talk, uh, you know. You can, yeah, hey, we need to move this over this way. Yeah, we need to do or like that. when they're yelling at me going, hey, like I need like, you know, scoop my way six inches or something. Then I, it's really easy, you know, and you're not trying to do hand signals and whatever, you know, it's, it, it makes life easier. It, it to, makes Communication sense. is awesome. Absolutely. But, and like the door also is the thing that just makes so much noise when you're running it because it's, it's constantly all, rattling because it's on around. rollers yeah. right so, and when so it, yeah it's like mm-hmm. a garage door so it's just da, 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 all the time and it's obnoxious so there's a lot of times where i'm like oh man like you can actually like just turn the radio on and listen to it and the deer and you can't really turn the radio on unless it's not like on volume 15 you know? like it has to be all the way up <laughs> to be able to listen to what you're trying to you know so there's a lot of reasons why i want to move to it but uh I'm not trying to be a deer salesman. I'm just no, saying, no, I, I know. I, I, it's funny because you I know, know past, deer past life exactly. My my past you know. life and and, uh, and they're t- they're nice machines. They've they've come a long way on their on their construction equipment. They yeah. really have. I mean, you ask a lot of people thirty t- twenty years ago if they'd take a deer skid lo- loader and they'd be like, "Fuck no," yep. you know, give me anything but. Because the funny thing is, okay, just a quick, because I know this. So up until Quick two, sales pitch. yeah, up until <laughs> two thousand and ten or eleven, John Deere's lawn and garden built their skid steers. Mm. Their lawn and garden department built their skid steers, and then John Deere got a great idea. Hey, why don't we let our construction side build our skid steers? And they're like, Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> So then that's when they came out with the E series, you know, the, the, the 316. When I was looking for, and when I was looking for the talk, um, I had the jobs leading up to that. I'd, you know, I rented a Bobcat. I rented a deer. I rent, you know, I rented a Kubota cause like they were kind of new on the scene at that time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know, trying them out and I was talking to dealers and like, I would just go and like rent them for like a week or whatever I needed uh, not asking, not, you know, not trying to go and, hey, Mr. Salesman, can I have a demo? <laughs> you know, like not playing the game. Like I'll pay the rent, but like I want to be able to run the machine on a job for a week, see what I like, what I don't like. So I tried a handful of different machines. And uh, at the time it was the D-Series. Couldn't do it. I hated it. It was like the controls were really jumpy. and just Well, that was the D-Series was, yeah. the, was kind of their their – relaunch right? right the d-series was the first time that the construction the yeah, construction I think, side is of that when they changed a paint scheme too the, like they the did. gray and yeah the gray, gray and yeah, yellow the gray and yeah. That, yeah. so that was their that was kind of their initial now mm-hmm. don't get me wrong they were light years ahead to where they, where they of were. where they were right. i mean this was like a hundred percent turnaround right. and they're like hey we got something here and even us even us were like hey you're on to something. You, you're keep going. You're yeah. getting something right. here. Let, let's just keep improving mm-hmm. this thing. And you, you're right. They, they were jumpy. You know, they had some uh, hydraulic drive issues. Yeah, because those were like that. those were like an electric over hydraulic yep. machine. That was the first. That, that was the first machine that they had with electric yeah, over hydraulic. And that takes, I think, a little bit of perfecting. That's that's it's definitely not a, a tricky. It's not simple. Yeah. <laughs> so that was like one of the biggest things. I was like, I just I cannot deal with this thing. You know. So then I I moved into like. Uh, the, when I demoed the talk, which was really funny because like Adam was just like, what are those like red and gray machines or something? And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot like talk, talk exists, you know? So I was like, and they kind of like pioneered like the more like dozer style undercarriage on a skid loader. So I was like, well, if they, if they kind of did that, I was like, that'd probably make sense. So I ended up demoing one of those and uh, hydraulic over hydraulic. So you can't switch your controls but they're just smooth and it's just butter. And I was like, Ooh, I like this. And then 
talking to a couple different sales guys, they had like the best, the best deal at the time. They would allow any consecutive rent to be used as a down payment, which like I was just starting business. I was like a year and a half or two years into business, like cash flow. Like I didn't even that wasn't in my book. What's vocabulary cash yet. flow? You know, like I had no <laughs> idea what that meant. It was just like make some money, pay some bills, make some money, pay some bills. So when he was like, oh, like you know, you don't have to come to the table today with 20 grand or something like that. He's like, you could rent it for a couple months. And then like at the end of the season, then you could finance it. And I was like, okay. It's not a bad idea. So I ended up renting it and like, I rented it actually quite a bit longer than what I originally would have probably done. Looking back, I should have pulled the finance trigger a little earlier for <laughs> cash flow purposes. <laughs> Didn't know what that was yet. Um, <clears throat> but I was just like, I was just, working down the principal on it, you know, and I was like, well, this is sweet. I was like, every month it gets three grand cheaper, you know? And, <laughs> and so, meanwhile, you're going, man, I could use that three but grand that's somewhere just, that's else. Just it, you know, it's like, well, shit, if the payment was a thousand dollars, I'd have $2,000 to do something else with, you know? So learning lesson there, but, uh, ended up renting it a little longer than I thought. And then I finally like pulled the finance trigger, did like a two year note on it. So it was quick and easy, burnt it off. And then now I have it, you know, but, like deer didn't have that option. No, no. Uh, Kubota would only give me a month. They would say like, if you rent it for this month and you decide to buy it, we'll give you that month as your down payment. But then you need to come to the table with 10 more grand. And I didn't have 10 more grand. No, no. So there is a lot of benefits uh, well, to worked, working with them. I must say know? it worked for you at the time, right? right. Cause you, here you are, you're a young guy starting out and they're the ones that said, Hey, if you do it this way, mm -hmm. we're here to help you. I mean, we, I know when I was in sales, I would do anything in my power to help you buy a right. piece of equipment, you know? So if, if you're going to rent this thing, well, why, why would I turn around and say, oh, well, you rent it for three months. You owe me, let's just say it's $3,000 a month. So you owe me 9,000. Oh, but by the way, I'm going to want 20% down right. on top of the 9,000 you just paid me. I'm like, no, 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 no. Right. You know, I, I, I'll do my best to help you out. I got to stay within my guidelines, Right. but I'll do, and, and if, and if it's something that's out of the ordinary, let me make a phone call. Right. Let me see what I can do for you. Because right. at the end of the day, I want to sell you that piece of equipment. Right. Right. You want to buy the piece of equipment. So why not do everything in my power to help you out? Because at right. the end of the day, you're helping me out. Right. Yeah, that was the one thing I noticed with them. They're very, uh, so that's Kelby Brothers out of Milwaukee. And they're very, like, customer-oriented in that way. Like, literally everything on the lot is for sale and for rent. And wow, that makes a huge That's difference. Because like yeah. this year for that demo job, uh, we rented a three hundred, so that's a sizable machine. Uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> when it when yeah. it showed up, it had fifty six hours on it. Wow, I, this is what I need to do. This is the size that I'm looking for. You know, I got one of those goofy mantis buckets on it because they won't put a thumb on that. So that's probably like a thirty thousand dollar thumb yeah, or something yeah but they get, got those man you get into those bigger yeah. ones it, it gets and then it's like quick. well then shit if you're gonna do it you might as well get like the progressive length thumb <laughs> and you might as well really do it up and spend like 50 grand you know but whatever it's just it's just money at the end of the day um you, you can, can make, make more, more tomorrow yeah i was gonna say you make more tomorrow make more um tomorrow. but uh they got those mantis buckets so they have like the uh the thumb is mounted to the bucket and then the bucket has just like hydraulic lines that just plug into your auxiliaries. Makes sense. So you still get a thumb out of it. Yeah. Uh, so I told them what we wanted to do and what I was looking for. I was like, I would take a 250 on the light end of things. I was like a 300 would probably be more comfortable. I was like, if you had a 350 available, I'd probably run that. It was like 345 would be fine. Zero tail swing. That'd be kind of cool. Um, and they had. Okay. The, for those that don't know what tail swing is, is when you're on the, when you're on oh, excavator sorry. and you turn instead of being in the tracks and you you're turn outside of the there. tracks, the back of where the engine is and where some of the hydraulics and stuff is can stick out past the tracks. So when you have zero tailspin, it stays within inside. the outside of the track. Right. So wherever you're at, if you're in between two houses yep. and you want to spin, you don't have to worry about that, the ass end of it, the tail of yeah, it, the, swinging out to hit anything or anything like that. It stays inside the right. track. So if your track fits in there, your you machine fit, will fit yeah. in there. I think Sorry. they're, they're I, no, they're super popular for road work because if you're on like a two lane road and you're 
swinging towards the ditch, your tail isn't swinging into, into the road. Track. And it's very popular, like in subdivisions. Yep. So yeah, th- so I just like, wanted to. Whenever I dig like basements, will I'll usually rent like a one forty five, and that's a zero tail swing one sixty series. So that's like a thirty thousand pound machine, thirty three thousand or something like that. And they're always really nice because like. The couple basements that we dig, like, in subdivisions, like, your spoils pile is all of, like, 10 feet away from your hole. It is. So, like, while you're digging, your, you know, stockpile is right behind you. So, it's really nice to have that zero tail swing where you can fit between. Yep. Yeah, Absolutely. The last, the one we did this spring was, uh, it ended up being, like, probably right around, like, a 3,000 square foot hole on a 10,000 square foot lot. Wow. And the dude wanted everything to stay there. And I was like, well, it's not all going to fit. Because you get the <laughs> you get the fluff factor that everyone forgets about. You know, it's like you can dig a shovel full out of the ground. It never goes back in the way that it came out. Nope. You, know? you always have more left over that somehow doesn't fit in there. <laughs> so I was like, you're not going to have enough. Like when I told him what he was looking at yardage wise, he was like, oh, there's no way. And I was like, you're not going to have enough room, dude. Well, here we are, two thirds of the way done, and I'm like, "Where do you want me to put this shit?" You know, and he's like, uh, "My dad drives a quad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him and see if he'll, he'll come over and haul a couple loads for us." I was like, "All right, it's gonna be so, more than a couple, by yeah, the way." I think we ended up hauling probably, probably half a dozen to a dozen <laughs> loads out, probably a, closer to a dozen. There's probably ten or twelve loads that ended yeah. up leaving because then I'm, I had I'm to sure, dig the I'm sure. dig the driveway. You know, I'll forget about that. You know, and then it's like, well, while I'm here digging, you want a driveway? You know, yeah, let's dig that in too. So there's another two or three loads. You know, it's like, but I knew it wasn't all gonna fit. You know, um, try to warn the guy, and then he knows better. So it is what it is. But yeah, that was really tight. So the 145 was almost like. I was almost too big on that lot, like that. But like, obviously, trying to dig it with my fifty, I would have been there for like Days. three weeks. Just like, yeah, we're getting it done. Which don't get me wrong, a fifty is a phenomenal machine. It'll do it. It's just when you're digging something that big, the dude and Sharon. There's uh, that little subdivision off State Line there, uh, Sharon yeah. Green yeah. or whatever on the north side. Yeah, mm-hmm. the one house. Like Owen was digging the basement, you know, with their basement machine. And the dude at the other end was digging his basement with a mini. <laughs> I was like, all right. He, and he, for like probably a week and a half, was just. Well, I mean, if he, own, if he owns the mini, right? And oh, yeah, I totally get it. I totally get it, the man. It makes sense. Uh, but on the other hand, if you want to keep. I think the part flowing. that was driving him crazy was he would like take out like, you know, like a dozen scoops and throw them behind him. And then he would jump out of the mini jump in the skid loader and then take the skid loader <laughs> and drive it over here and have like six buckets to take over, you know, and then dump it in the spoils pile and then come back and then jump in the mini and then take out 12 more scoops, you know, and I was like, that is Man, a lot of messing around. Be there you know? all day to get nothing Don't get me wrong. They were digging the thing in like February or something. So like, or maybe March. So I'm sure they didn't have a whole lot else going on. No. But, like, in the middle of summer, like, you can't waste that time. No, because like, you got It you, pays, like, that basement, that 3,000-square-foot hole that we dug, I had the hole. I rented it for one day. The hole cost me, like, $600 for the day. I'm woo. Like, spend the money, get it done in a day, move on to the next one. Yep. Agreed. Cash flow. I learned that. <laughs> Thank God you learned that, right? Well, that's still I, learning. And I, but I think a good business, I think a good business owner needs to learn cash flow mm-hmm. because just like what you just said, it's six hundred dollars for the day. But guess what? I got this basement dug in a day. Yep. Where my mini, yes, I own my mini, but it's going to take me four days. Well, now I'm taking three days away from this job or another job. Yep. And when you own it, and time is money. Efficiency equals yeah. time and time equals money, yeah. right? So the more efficient you can be, the more time you're going to save, and the more money you can make or save at that and point. And with time. that, I'm going to go buy that 650. <laughs> <laughs> Not a 333? I should get a 333 <laughs> first. But, but that's 650, man. Oh, I'm just man. giving you a hard time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the ag stuff has been fun, though, this year. It's been It's been a good change of pace. Learned a lot. You are, you, are you are you wanting to get more and more into that? I would definitely do some more of it. Um, I keep joking with them because like there's uh, we've we've done like a lot of out of the ordinary things that like I have never done in the past. But I'm like 
I can figure it out, you know. Uh, so well, like, well the, th- the funny thing is, is you, you've been in the building industry mm-hmm. your whole life, right? So it's one of those things where you build custom houses before, and you said earlier, if yeah, I never build maybe, another maybe custom no house, house, if I had never build a custom house again, it's not going to hurt your feelings. But when it comes to a steel building, it's probably much simpler. Right. So even if you've never done something like that, you can sit down, oh yeah, bust I mean, out the computer and say, okay, we need this by this. We're going to do way, this by this. We're going to make it this way. way. Simpler. It, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist no. to figure, especially at the, at with... At the end of the day, plumb level and square is plumb level and square. And, and I was, and was going to say, and at the end of the day, you've got that knowledge of building a custom home to go to a steel pole barn. Yeah. Or a parlor or yeah. whatever. So a, like a heated we shop. Even, like we even stepped out of the ordinary to like where uh so like I'm sure like the dairy guys that spend lots of money, you know, you build you drop your galvanized pipe in the ground so for your fence poles, mm-hmm. you know, and then you weld your bars in so that it's all just done. It's more or less like a permanent fence that's not going anywhere so that you can move you know, cattle from here to here to here to here, wherever. So we did a lot of that too. So like when we did that 60 by 90 pad out in front of the one goat shed, <clears throat> we dropped in a bunch of poles and then we went back afterwards when the concrete was done and then we welded in all of our cross members and stuff and got everything all done so that like it's, that's it, you know, and then we've got it set up to where like, the gate will swing from here to here and it'll latch at either post so that if you're moving, you know, goats this way, you can swing it this way. And if you're moving them that way, you can swing it the other way and it all makes so sense. So you're a professional you know? fence builder. So essentially we just keep joking that I, I'm calling myself <laughs> Shrines from Wish because I'm <laughs> definitely probably cheaper than what Shrines is, you know, for what we're doing. But, uh, you know, we dabbled, I, uh, we put steel in their parlor. They didn't have like a steel panel on the walls. So uh, we took the whole parlor apart in sections, you know, uh, redid all the steel in there. So that was pretty cool. Now on the inside. Yep. For the, and then yeah. did you put so insulation it, and stuff in the back? Did you redo uh, so the insulation? They, or? The way, so goat dairies are weird because essentially they're all grade B dairies, except for the one guy who set the standard for the grade A dairies conveniently. He's the only one that can meet the standard. So funny. Uh, so obviously, I you know, know them, like, really? Yeah. The, that's like a, I guess that's a thing. Oh, I, <laughs> so well, I knew there was different. basically all the goat dairies. They just go strictly for cheese. And yeah. Like yeah. In a I cattle knew- in a cattle dairy. It'd be the same way. Like if you're a grade B dairy, like you can't produce fluid milk that would end up like Correct. a grocery store. I, I knew that much. Cheese. But, but it's I funny because the guy who set the standard is the only one that says sells fluid goat milk. See, I didn't. I didn't. Instead did, of cheese, that's why I was saying, like, man, I didn't know yeah. that because I, because you know, obviously there's grade A's and there's grade mm-hmm. B's, you know, dairies out there. But I, I didn't know that all goats, all goat. <laughs> it's weird, but it's that's what Except it is. Except for the one, no, the guy who set the standard. <laughs> funny. <laughs> little uh we call that a conflict of interest um but yeah. anyway so like grade, i wonder i wonder b stuff can be a little like not as nice if you will yeah you know i don't know how to i don't know how to work well, i can word out. that for you their, their cell count can be a little bit higher right. their butter fat might not be quite as high right. blah 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 blah. that that so it breaks it down as far as the milk that's being produced right so they were able to get away for the last 10 years. They did, uh, like, all their parlor walls were just OSB over the studs, painted white. It all looked nice. Yep, it worked. But that was totally fine. Totally acceptable. Never had issues with milk inspections, anything like that. No. So when we're doing all this big, like, expansion and whatever, he's like, well, you know, if there's, like, a little bit of money, like, it'd be really nice to, like, make the parlor, like, Legit. Kind of nice, you <laughs> Legit. know, like, let's put some steel on the walls so that, like, if I want to, like, wash the walls down, like, I can wash the walls down and, like, with a garden let's hose. make <laughs> it nice, you know. So uh, we did all that. Then we did, like, a bunch of FRP in the milk house and made the milk house nice and shiny. That's like that. Yeah. It's like the, you know what it is. Yeah, like I know. FRP. Yeah, FRP. I don't know. That's just, that's what's in milk house. Yeah, you I, don't, know? I don't know the exact um, name of it. It might come to me later. Let me think. I literally that. Googled milk house board and FRP came up and I was like, <laughs> all right, that's what we're using, you know? Um, 
That's yes. that's how quickly I learned that one. Google for um, the win. But we, you know, we redid that stuff too, or whatever. So like, there was a lot of taking apart, putting it back together, uh, kind of like learning how everything works or whatever. So I wouldn't say that I'm like ready to just like jump in and be like, oh yeah, like you're gonna build a new parlor. I could totally build that for you. <laughs> like I'm not there, but like definitely learning, and I'd like to learn more about it and kind of keep going down the ag route because that seems like it would be. Uh, a better fit because like i don't know if you knew that but i actually like went to school to be a vet oh i didn't know that yeah and then like family stuff happened so then i didn't i didn't ever finish so that. so really your passion really is in agriculture yeah right? like i really wanted to be large animal vet and run farm to farm doing twisted stomachs aren't you glad you, you went down that career path i think i would have made a pretty good vet though but, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I could have made it through all the school. That That's was what I was getting part. at. Um, I, I, got, did, I did incredible in any of, like, my science classes, any of my, like, more veterinary-specific animal science classes, killed them. Like, aced everything, any extra credit points on any of the tests, hit everything, no problem. But then it's, like, English, C... <laughs> 10 you years know, of art, schooling. Oh. Yeah, that's a lot of, that's, but I was in a totally different place then, you know, cause that was like, my parents had the little farm, you know, we raised animals there. So like, I would have totally been okay with that at the time. Yeah, cause that's yeah. where like my passion was, but then, you know, family stuff, farms gone, dropped out of school, you know, what am I going to do now? Well, then, like, I kind of, like, fell into the carpentry stuff because that's how I was paying for school is, like, moonlighting carpentry, you know? So, like, I'd come remodel your kitchen at night after school, <laughs> and then I would take the money that you paid me, and then I'd pay my tuition with it. And then the one day I just had the the light bulb, and I was like, you know, if I quit paying for this tuition, I have a lot of money I could, I could do pretty good for myself. And I was like, I think I'm going to leave. I walked out and that was the end of school it's funny because in our society today it's college 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 oh, yeah. and a guy like you shows that yeah you have a passion for animals and you had a passion to go do what you do but logic told you yeah, hey I, I can go another route here still be successful i mean don't get me wrong I, i'm sure there was days you sat down on your couch when you got home at night and wondered how the hell am i gonna do this and I'm sure there's days yeah, where you, and I'm sure you woke up days and said, today I'm going to kick today right in the ass. We're yeah. going to get this done. Yep. I, I, I got to get that paycheck because I, I got to pay for the skid steer. Or I got to pay for my help yeah, that's here helping sure. me. Or, or I, I, I got to pay for, for the mortgage that I'm living right. in. So I'm going to kick today in the ass to get it done. When owning a business, you're always going to have highs and lows. Yep. Now, once you get established. It becomes easier. It, it, your lows become less yeah. right you, you, your lows become instead of once a week maybe it's once a month or maybe it's once every other week whatever the case may yeah, be. yeah i think a lot of it too like the lows are all like for me they're usually customer driven you get a good customer like piece of cake fly through it jobs done it's, it'll be done early you know you get kind of a pain in the ass shitty customer and then all of a sudden it's like i don't want to fucking be here i don't want to do this you know, and that's when you have, like, your low days. And then, like, where I, like, my low days are, like, I hate chasing money. It is the one thing that I, I just, it, you know, you go to the, you go to a restaurant, food comes out, bill comes out, you pay the bill, you leave a tip, you leave. Everywhere you go, everything in life, you pay the bill and you leave. Except your job. And then in my job, it's the haggling it's, you know, I've had customers in the past that, like, have literally gone and agreed to a job. I do the job. And now this is this is a little different. This was from some years past when I would do smaller jobs because on the big jobs, obviously, there's draw schedules and all kinds of stuff going on. But yeah, like absolutely. on the little jobs, like, it gets kind of hard. It's kind of a pain. Like, if I know I'm going to be at your place for two days, I don't, I don't need a down payment. You know, I can just collect it all tomorrow at the end of the day when I'm leaving. When I and see And life's you. good because I was here for two days, you know. Um, and so. But you get the $100,000 jobs. Oh, yeah. And now all of a sudden several it's. Several $100,000 jobs. I was just using take, 
they take lots of draws. And, and, and lots of time. Yeah. It, it, that, that's not a, oh, we're going to go in here yeah. on a Monday and we're done Friday afternoon. Yeah. Uh-uh. They take, so, like, you know, it's, it's even tough because, like, the smaller buildings and stuff, like, I can get away with those a lot of times in two draws. I need a little bit on the front side to get my material ordered. I'll take the rest when we're done. Then, like, when you get into these, like, multiple phases, bigger jobs, then it's, like, there's a whole draw schedule. There might be four, six, eight, ten different draws along the way. Right. Because cash flow. Exactly. So. This podcast episode is sponsored by Dan's Diesel Performance. If you're looking to improve your truck's performance, efficiency, or appearance, check out Dan's Diesel Performance. They manufacture turbochargers, fuel injectors, fuel pumps, transmissions, intake piping, and much, much more. Plus, they offer all the top brands in the diesel industry. They're located in McChesney Park, Illinois. Visit their website at dansdieselperformance.com or give them a call at 815-977-5865. Oh, well, and, I'm, and and the funny thing is, I'm sure a guy like you, if 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 I walked up to you and said, "Hey, I I don't got X amount of dollars sitting here right now. Give me a little time." Right. You know me. I know you. Uh, yeah, we yeah. get along with each other well. Not I'm not gonna. Deal. I'm not gonna screw you. Right. You're, you're still gonna help a guy out. Right. Yeah. I I, I know your I know your character well enough that that that's, that's that's what you would do. But if I come to you at the end of a job and go, "Hey, bud, yeah, how are we doing? Yeah, would a case See, of and, beer and, count this?" Or the part, the part that really <laughs> irked me on that one that like just about sent me over the edge was, uh, you know, she uh, she had like a credit card that she liked to use, and then she would use the cash back to buy Christmas presents for her family and blah blah blah. Makes totally sense. understand. So yep. I would always like when I went to go get materials, I would just take her credit card. I'd run her credit card. It's not a big deal. We've done a ton of work together. So if no that's problem. how you want to do it, that's fine. doesn't bother me. And uh, the part that irked me the worst, you're going to love this. Guess what she paid first? She used the rest of the money that she had to pay off the credit card so that she didn't have to eat the interest on it. And then she put me on the payment plan. Well, and that I makes like, sense. I mean, well, financially it does make financially, sense. Financially. I mean, but I'm it like, sucks for you. I'm like, but gee, 23% cards, interest. Credit cards have a monthly minimum. I never said anything about a monthly minimum. <laughs> I expect to get paid at the end of the job. So that one kind of irked me a little bit. And I was like, all right. And, uh, you know, since then, I think she's asked me to do a couple things. And I was just like, hey, listen, I'm really busy right now. And I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to get to it. So, well, so your it, grandkids or something wants to do it or, uh, you know, you got a family member. Like, I would ask them if they could help out. And I've just kind of politely declined. Well, I think, no, I'm not real interested. And I think most people can understand exactly what I'm about to say here is if you've been burned once, shame on you. Yeah. Right. But if you burn me twice, yeah. shame on me. Yeah. And a lot of people don't get to the second part of that. Yeah. Because they learn their lesson from the first time. Yep. Which is good. Well, you want to learn the first time because yeah. you keep going down the Look same. It, you know. I don't disagree with that. Do I believe that people deserve second chances? Sure. I do believe that. You know, but in, in a situation where if I screw up and I tell you I screw up and I tell you up front that I screwed up and then I'm sorry – Man, I hope I get a second chance. Right. But if you tell me after you found out or or right. at the end of a job like you're talking about, it's like, well, you know, that yeah. puts a real and bad that's, taste. That's what I told her. I was like, you know, I would have approached this whole week different. I was like, those guys are used to like in wintertime, like slowing down a little bit, maybe not hitting 40 hours every week or like maybe having some weeks where like, man, it's just miserable. Like, let's just reconvene next week or you know all of us will go and push snow so like oh hey we got a snowstorm coming so like let's just not do whatever let's go focus on our yeah, snow let, get some rest let's and then not kill ourselves you know there's no yeah. there's no need to try to pull 72 hours straight because you had to plow snow and finish this job and go salt and it, it, exactly not, no 100 so right. i i was like the part that upsets me is i was like i wouldn't mind being on a payment plan to you if it was ju- if it was talked about up front and it was just me cuz i could have done everything we did here this week by myself but i was like you told me you would pay for the job 
And then I said, okay, and I brought my guys in, and I was like, now I still pay them. So, like, now I'm upside down money on your job until you get me right side well, up. Well, and, and the thing is, yeah, it might have taken you 10 days to do the job instead of instead of right. five. And, but and I'm at sure the end of the those day, two would have had no problem sitting at home. And at the end of the day, you would have been the only one affected by it. Yep. Now, it would have been fine because I would have looked at it and I'd be like, oh, this is kind of cool. I'm going to get like $500 every month for the next six months or whatever the case may have been, you know. And it would have been like, well, that's kind of cool because – in you weren't June, expecting that. It's like, oh, look, $500. You know, it's like, oh, I forgot I did that thing for the week, you know, in the winter time, and it's still paying me. You know, like, I could have got along with that if it was just me. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure. I hope that don't happen very often in your no. business. But I, I, I'm sure. Uh, I think it also kind of, like, forced me to, like, tighten up on stuff, too, and, like, sit down, write the contracts on the little jobs that – Typically, you just be like, oh, yeah, we can get that done next week for you. Let's just fly through it. Like, now if it's, like, a one- or two-day job, I'll still sit down. I, you know, I have a template, so it's not even like it's that hard. Like, I just have to, like, fill in the template and then, like, hit print and then the contract. Like, all the contract lingo is the contract lingo. You know R- remind I mean? me to talk to you about this off the air. Oh, boy, this should be fun. It will. Because <laughs> I don't, I don't want to bring it up here on the air because, uh, no, I just don't want to do that. But remind me to talk to you about that sure. off, off off the off the mic. Um uh, but but having a template like that is really cool right. because like you said it you don't have to type it out every yeah. well, time like you get said, a new job. The you contract just, lingo is the contract lingo. You know, like all the small print, like the attorney can dress that up every year or two, and it's probably fine. It's just a matter of filling out like your draw schedule and whatever. Which like on the little jobs isn't even that hard because it's probably going to be fifty percent no, fifty percent when I'm done. So like. But it was Makes just, sense. I mean, I'll just be 100% honest. I hate paperwork. So, like, on the little jobs, if I go and I talk to you and you're like, hey, we got this field over here and we want to do a field entrance, I'm just going to be like, okay, it's going to cost this much money and just be done. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> I'm I, not going to bring you paperwork to sign. And I should just sit down for 15 minutes and be like, the field entrance is going to cost this much money. So, I need a, this much here, this much here, blah, blah, blah. Plug in your info and then hit send. You can sign it right from your phone, and you can hit send, and it comes back my way, and now we have a contract. We're good to go. It's not even that hard, but I just hate sitting down doing paper. You know, the, the f- I miss the days where everything was done with a handshake. Hand shake. That was I, good times. I, 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 I miss that. Times, yeah. You know, if you tell me you're going to buy something from me, and we, and we shake on it, yep. to me, that's, I got your word, and your word is key. I, I've had times when I was selling stuff at Deer. I had people sit down. You know, I'd, I'd go through the whole spiel, shebang. We'd sit down, and I'd, I'd look at them and say, do you want to go home and think about it and come back and see me? Do you want to buy it now? What's your thought process? And I've had a lot of people say, we'll go home and talk about it. And they'll call me on the phone and say, Kyle, got a deal. Okay. I can take your word on that because I'm going to come get paperwork signed. And right. I go to their house, or they come back in. We shake hands. Paperwork gets signed. And then their product would come in and I'd call them up and I'd call them up and I'd call them up and then I'd go to their house and I'd send them emails and nobody would answer the door. And eventually three months later, get a phone call. Oh, you know, sorry, man, my water heater broke. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. And that affected this $5,000 deal. How? Yeah. Cause it's 0% interest and you weren't putting any money down. <laughs> no, you, you know, just, you just changed your mind. Yeah. And, and and I get it, but if you change your mind, be blunt with me, yeah, man. No. Don't don't just come up and this year. And this year, I'd and... say uh, one of my like biggest learning things this year is I think this has been the year I've said no more than I've ever said no. Well, before. that can be a good thing. It is right. It's been a really good thing because that year. means you are busy enough. Yep. For you and your employee. Plus, you said you're already behind. Yep. So why take a job if you know, like, man, I'm looking at all these things that I got to get done. There's probably a chance I'm not going to get it get done this year. And if I do, it's the luck of the yep. freaking draw because everything went perfect yep. and Which nothing ever it? goes yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So saying no is not a bad thing. Right. Yeah. This year, uh, we, I kind of decided like earlier in the year uh, when we got like the ag stuff going that I was like, I'd like to kind of chase down that path. And like, I think, I don't remember if maybe it's like Adam said it to me or something one day. I don't remember, but he was just like, Hey man, like if you're going down that path, you got to burn the ships. I was like, you're right. 
because if I take on a new construction home or a big remodel, there's a really good chance that someone else is going to call and want a sheep shed or a hog barn for their kids' show animals or whatever the case may be. And that I'm going to be too busy doing this remodel or this new construction home, and I'm not going to be able to do it. So I just need to say no to the things that I don't want to do and say yes to the things that I do want to do and start like really just narrowing in on fine, the stuff that fine that I want to do. So, yep. um, you know, we've said no a lot and anything like excavation wise, pole barn wise, whatever, I've been like, yep, we'll figure it out and we'll just keep cruising at just those things, you know. Um, and I know I won't be able to just like break into the ag world like right away and be putting up everyone's big free stalls and all you that got a lot stuff, of, you got a lot of, you got a lot of competition. You know, there is, but a couple more years, there's not going to be, I don't know about so. that. You, you got a lot of competition between like Morton buildings and Clary's yeah, that one, and that one's and, tough. That and, one is tough. Cause and, they are you know, Peterson metal, metal, metal masters yep. down there. I, I mean, you, you've got a lot of competition when it comes to that right. type of building. Right. Uh, inside that's a whole nother ball game right right because you can put up sheet metal you can pour the concrete you can do a lot of things so if people had yeah, like I mean, a shed and they wanted to turn it to the, a shop the one building that we did this year um earlier it was like probably like in july or something like that the only reason that we got it was because he was able to sign one contract with me and get the whole thing and uh, a couple other builders in the area were like, I, I'm going to show up and put the building up. It's your job to find someone to come in and do all the grading and excavating. It's your job to find somebody to come in and pour the floor. It's your job to find somebody to put in the overheads. Your job to find an electrician to put a service to it. That's all on you. I show up. I put the building up. I leave. And the only reason that he ended up signing with me was because I offered him a shell, but then in the options section, I offered him the grading, Everything the excavating, else. the electrical service. And he was like, wait a minute, so I can just take this price plus all these option prices and that's my total building finished? And I was like, yep, uh, whatever options you want. It's like some guys are like, hey, I got a cousin that does concrete. All right, cool. He can Strike come the concrete off. Life. Don't have to check that that option box. So he really liked that, and that was the only reason. That's huge. Because a couple of the other builders didn't want to deal with the subcontractors. And, like, I have a, a good electrician that I work with now. I have a good heating guy that I work with now. I have a good plumber that I work with. So I'm like, I have my subs figured out. My concrete guys are, are freaking hilarious. They're the <laughs> funniest group of guys that I've ever had. Um, they're always just such a riot to have around. So good group of guys and then like I can handle the excavating if it's really big stuff I'll call Alwyn and we'll figure it out like crushing all that concrete you know we'll figure it out yep um so like now we can offer the whole package and I think that sometimes people would rather just like see the whole number and be like this project is going to set me back this many dollars and there's no extras or and no. And that's what it is. Yep. And, and they can then factor in for a 10% overage or whatever they want to factor in for because that's what everyone should do because um, nothing ever goes perfect, like we said before. So they can factor that in, but they have the number, and they don't have to make 15 phone calls. And then try to add it all together themselves yep. and figure out which way to do this. That's brilliant. And then somebody misunderstood and, oh, you wanted a new service. Oh, I thought that you wanted – you know, just the, the barn wired, yeah, or whatever, you know, right. so then it's like, oh, I didn't know that I had to call a lion, get them involved and blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, for that kind of stuff, I think that people appreciate that, like, we can just have like Absolutely. one number and that's that. Totally agree. So I, and I, and I'm fine because I don't mind making phone calls and still playing general contractor a little bit. Well, at the end of the day, it's one of those where if you're sitting in a mini excavator and you're digging out a basement. Yep or you're digging a tile line or whatever you're doing, why not be on the phone? Mm -hmm. I just had this conversation with the last guy that was in the podcast where all of a sudden you're in a vehicle all the time. Yeah, make a phone call. Be on, be on the phone. Yep. Talk to somebody. You can create relationships and partnerships and things like that if you're doing that. So that's a brilliant idea the way to do it. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. No, definitely on the phone a lot. So, and the mini definitely helps with that. Absolutely. Skid loader, not so much. That's, that's too noisy. <laughs> that one's too noisy yet. But the mini, that, that works. So, throw in my AirPods and I'm good to go. So, 
This has been uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it always is. Thanks for coming back. How many months until the next visit? I don't know. Uh, when, whenever you want to come back, we'll schedule it up. Yeah, we'll figure something out. I know we will. Yeah. I, I enjoy hearing your stories. And, oh, it's and, always fun. And some of this. I'm, I'm excited for the next time because this is a big improvement. I'm, so, like, hope, I'm hoping the next time like, yeah, we're like decked uh, out in here. And I, there's like. You know, there, there's a, there's only so much money can only go so far. You know, that cash flow thing that we were talking about, you know, yeah. right now this podcast is putting me way in the red. <laughs> Turns out negative cash flow. Shit. <laughs> negative cash flow is not good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, I, I I do have some uh, ideas of improvements yeah. that that I don't think will will be will be yeah. too big. Sweat equity. Um, yeah, and and I and I'm and I'm I'm looking forward to it. So hopefully the next time you come here, we can yeah. have some of those improvements here. Not yeah. saying they will, not saying they won't, yeah, but I've got this some. This is still fun either way. So I, uh, I've got some ideas, and this is I know this is a big improvement since the last time you were here. Yeah. So, you know, thanks for taking the time to come yeah. back and hang out and and having some uh, beverages and yep. hanging out with me. And I appreciate it. It's been yeah. bl- it's been a blast. Always always a pleasure. Until next time, see you, sir. See ya.